So then we came up with what we're calling a design surface, and it's a relative term because it's not sacred in the sense that it's going to take hits through time, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. so the next slide you go to, so this is a simple surface, then you have a simple mesh, triangulated mesh, oh, you can go back one if you would, please. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is just a simple um, triangulated mesh of the surface that we developed. Now if you go to the next one, what we did was we used a um, plug-in Weaverbird for um, Grasshopper, which is a Rhino uh, you know, parametric engine, mm -hmm. and we use the Weaver Bird script to dynamically remesh. So weighted, the red lines represent kind of a, a sense of weightedness to the mesh, and we were running versions of this, so we'll have many different influences at different times. But initially, we had some very specific ones that we're going after. Later, there became a secondary influence of the airflow in the mm -hmm. ducts that we were going to use. So, but you'll see as you go to the next one. Actually, let me ask you here. So these lines that you've created here, um, did you really use these lines in order in, um, in Weaverbird in order to influence the density of the, I don't know, the remeshing? Yep. Uh, three slides down, I think, we'll come to the actual diagram. Uh, I can it. Here, here is a, um, so the remeshed you see in the first slide to the left and you'll see the weightedness in the triangles in the background you know it's a darkening and then what happens is we take that mesh adjusted state and use a circle packing script one that was based on a Daniel Piker who's a coder that uses um, mm -hmm. Python and, and Grasshopper and so using that script we um, we're able to use the circle packing component of that script to, to determine relationships on that surface related to that adjusted mesh. And then what you'll see if you look back and forth between, and it is a dual um, nature of a, of a build here, you know, it's two things going on at the same time, but you see the, the center of the circle, which is in the middle image highlighted in red. And then when you go across uh, to the next image over, you'll see this. Um, polygon that's set out from that circle and the number of sides as in each of those sides relate, you know, e each polygon has a range of, we had a few four-sided polygons but only as resultants, not as intended. We started with a five and we set like a max ten number of mm -hmm. sides as our range when we were doing our polygons. That's one of the input variables that you can put into um, the Grasshopper engine that we custom built using the Daniel Piker script. So, if you look to the next slide, which by the way, when where can you get that Daniel Piker script? Can you get it on the Grasshopper form or something? Online, you can go on and um, you can Google and find some different. Um, you know, he has his own website, but I'm sure there are several yeah. forms you can go on okay. Grasshopper forms. Then, yeah. Yep. So here you see the plan view of the shell, and you see some of these lines of influence that you know, went into the remeshing, and then you see the remeshed mesh in the middle, and then the resultant polygon set for this particular version. We ran this script hundreds of times, 300 probably to 400 times where we had um, generated versions, and this one looks close to, you know, um, the ones that will be on the subsequent slide. So these are probably around a thousand um, polygons, but we kept adjusting those variables so that we had sets running down around 400, 450, 500 in order to try and play games between the variables that we were um, investigating at that time. Gauge of metal, type of metal, whether it's aluminum or stainless or mild steel. And each one of those ends up with repercussions downstream to secondary system. Say we pick mild steel, then you've got to deal with condensation, you know, in the shell. So, okay, well, let's look at aluminum. And these things kind of feed back on themselves, back and forth. So you'll see in the later images how we investigated that at full scale. So you can go to the next one. Okay. So then, you know, you have the extruded voxels on the left, which is just taking those polygons. And in the early versions, as I said, we just pushed them down to a secondary surface that was an offset surface and they weren't rationalized, let's say. Then we were able to get some structural analysis though and use that feedback to play into the 
so we use this diagram because the middle one you can see, you know, looking at it as in, I'm not sure which analysis software this is, but you can see the um, viewing the overall bridge as a beam, that there's a reaction in the middle there, and we, we just thickened up in there as just a kind of reference to, for that, not necessarily getting full benefit of the density there, but, you know. So you could go to the next slide. Actually, let me pause here for just one second as a side note. Don is asking a question. Um, going back to the dynamic relaxation, do you know if Form Inc. used Kangaroo to do that dynamic relaxation, or were they using some other structural analysis software? I believe they used a, um, a different engine. Uh, in fact, I would say um, almost 100% that they did not use Kangaroo. We used Kangaroo okay. on this project, but not, I don't think that that was their... Uh, tool that generated this, and that left image in these two uh, sets are the um, output from front. You know, those are the dynamically relaxed uh, surfaces. But I can ask Keon if somebody wants to hit me with email, I'll, I'll get them connected. Oh. I don't think okay. it works. Sorry. 